It's almost gift giving season, and what better way to insult the coworker you don't like than by gifting a Roomba? And I'm gonna buy this Roomba as cheaply and as conveniently as possible, meaning I'm going to find the lowest price and I'm going to find the physical store that's closest to me that has this in stock. To do this, we want to scrape the price from multiple chains like Best Buy, Home Depot, and Lowe's, as well as the inventory of the Roomba at each of the chain's physical stores once we figure out which one has the lowest price. There are a number of websites that scrape this data on an ongoing basis and make it available like BrickSeek, but what if you want to get this data directly and build your own scraper? I'm going to show you how you can get pricing and physical store inventory for a given product with its SKU, such as a Roomba, using the Best Buy Developer API. And the principles here are transferable to other unofficial APIs, like the Lowe's and Home Depot unofficial scraping APIs that we have on the Steve C platform. First, we want to generate a list of SKUs or UPCs or codes to identify the one product we want so we can compare it across multiple chains like Best Buy, Home Depot, and Lowe's. So let's search for Roomba on Google. So let's check out this Roomba 960. They want 500 bucks. And I just want to get the model number or SKU here. Uh, here we go. So this looks like a model number. We just need some common identifying string that we can use across multiple stores. So let's check the price at Best Buy. And let's check the price at Home Depot. And let's check the price at Lowe's. So I just Googled each store plus the model number and it drives me right to the results page. So now let's just double check and I can see here the Roomba 960. And here I can see the model number and Best Buy gives me the SKU. Home Depot gives me the model number and they have their own store SKU which looks internal to them. It doesn't seem to match the other SKU here in Best Buy but the model number ID is the same. And Lowe's gives you the same model number and they have their own internal ID. So for this product, we want to use the model number to find it across different stores, but other times you can use the SKU or the UPC, and Amazon has this thing called ASIN, which is for Amazon products, but sometimes that works with other stores that are reselling Amazon products. So let's get to the price. iRobot wants 500 bucks, Best Buy 450, Home Depot 450, and Lowe's only 400. So Lowe's has the lowest price. What a coincidence. So let's go buy this at Lowe's and I've got to be at this holiday party in about 20 minutes so I need to do this right now. I don't have time for waiting for shipping. So I need to get to a store and okay, uh oh. The closest store is in New Jersey. I live in New York. I can't get there in time. New Jersey, New Jersey. There's one in Brooklyn but that's far away. So Lowe's has them available in stock but they're far away. So I may not be able to get the lowest price if I need it in 20 minutes. Let's check Home Depot. You can scroll down and do check nearby stores. So it says ship to store, but I need it now. It says Fiverr in stock in Queens. That's too far away. Okay, all these are too far away. So let's hope I can get it in store at Best Buy. Let's see, store pickup. And let's pick up their availability widget. Okay, it's not available here at the closest store. Oh, but look, Union Square, it's available. So notice that Best Buy tells me if it's available or not but Home Depot will tell me the actual number that are in stock so I can see if maybe Home Depot's piling up inventory to prepare for Black Friday or something. Same with Lowe's, I can actually see the number that are in stock at each store. Best Buy just tells me if it's available or not, but anyway, answer my question, I can get one here on my way to this party. Now I hate having to go and check this manually each time, so let's hop into using APIs to make our life easier so we can let the data come to us. Let's start by using the Best Buy API because it's an official API that they support, unlike Home Depot and Lowe's. However, the principles behind using the Best Buy API can be applied to getting uh, this from unofficial APIs in Home Depot and Lowe's. Check out my video on how to use the Best Buy API. I'll put a link to it below. I go over all the things you have to do to register and get a token and go from zero to 60 in a few minutes. So this here is the Best Buy API wrapper on the Steve C data platform. This is just a standard platform that you can use as a client to the API. You can also see the unofficial wrapper for Home Depot and the unofficial wrapper for Lowe's. But we're just gonna work with the Best Buy API now because it's the only official API. You're free to use your own client and follow along with these endpoints, but we're just gonna use Steve C because it makes everything easy. Full disclosure, Steve C is a paid platform that I own, but I do post the URLs and there are even some free tools that will build the URLs and curl commands that you'll need to run these APIs. So you can always use those for free. First thing I wanna do is figure out how to get the price most of these APIs will have a product details endpoint that takes in an identifier like a SKU or an internal ID 
like Home Depot has like an internet ID, Lowe's has something similar. So let's get the product details and that'll bring back price. So here Best Buy uses SKUs. So let's get the SKU and let's put it in here and then put in your API key and let's execute this. So here the root object is going to contain uh, likely the information for the one product we get back. So let's just take a look at this JSON and see what Best Buy gives us back. Okay, so low price guarantee true. So I can see the regular price is $650, the on sale price is $450, so that matches the website. So it looks like to get the price from the Best Buy API, we want to use this sale price key. We could do the same thing for Home Depot using this product details endpoint, and the same thing for Lowe's using the search endpoint, which you can just put in the SKU or model number and then look at the first item. Now for inventory, it gets a little bit trickier. Most of these APIs will ask you for a product identifier and a store ID. A store ID is an internal ID that's going to be different for Best Buy and Home Depot and Lowe's that corresponds to a physical store. Now to get these store IDs, you can either try to scrape the site, like uh, if you look at that widget that pops up, you can check out store details. And usually if you look at the URL, you can find it somewhere in the URL, the store ID. So I can see here it's 1448 for Best Buy Upper West Side. And Best Buy API also makes it available to use as an official endpoint. So in Best Buy, for example, you just put in your zip code and then a search distance. So I'm going to put in my zip code and 10 miles uh, and then my API key. And you can put in any zip code you want. You can paginate through here and get all the stores in the whole country if you want. And then here I get back in my Steve C preview. Here it is, 1448 corresponds to this URL here. So I can see it's Upper West Side Broadway. So I just need to know this ID for each of the stores I want to query the inventory for using their API. And again, you'll find this pattern is very similar in Home Depot and Lowe's from their unofficial endpoints. Now to get the actual inventory of any given store, we can use this inventory checker endpoint, which takes in a product identifier like a SKU for Best Buy, as well as a store ID like 1448 in this example, and then it'll give us back if it's available or not. Other unofficial APIs like Home Depot or Lowe's will take those two inputs, but instead of telling you if it's available or not, they'll give you more information like how many are there so you can see who's stocking up for Black Friday. So here I put in the SKU and the store ID was 1448, API key, and they have this weird response format where if it's not available, they just give you an empty array for the stores. So this matches what we saw that it's not available on the Upper West Side. It was available at Union Square, so let's go back to the stores and let's download this as a CSV. And now I just need to get the store ID for Union Square. So I can just find in the spreadsheet, Union Square, here it is, and here's the store ID. Store.storeID 1531, and let's rerun this with the Union Square store ID, and this should return true, meaning that it's available. Now you can see Best Buy gives a little different response. There's some more fields here. If you look at the raw JSON, now the stores array is actually populated with the stores that contain the item. So again, it'll just tell you if it's true or not. You can also query this endpoint in Best Buy's case with a zip code, and it'll give you a list of stores that it's available, similar to the web interface. But Home Depot and Lowe's don't offer this to my knowledge, so I just wanted to demo this so you have a consistent way of querying multiple APIs via the same pattern. Well, this is great if you just have one product and one store you want to check, but Santa's got a big list. What if you want to take a big list of SKUs and a big list of store IDs and see which stores carry certain products. Well, you can do that with Steve C as well. If you scroll down, you'll find a workflow formula. Just import this formula and then fill in all of these collections here. So you just have to put in your Best Buy API key, the SKUs that you want to look up, and the store IDs you want to check the inventory for. So for the list of SKUs, let's put in the Roomba SKU. And let's find something, a couple other things to check. So usually give you uh, suggested products. Let's check out this one, see if they carry it. This could be our backup gift idea. And we'll just do two for now. And let's put in the store IDs to check. So just click here, add them here. So here I put in 1531, that was Union Square that had the Roomba. And I put in the other store that we checked, 1448, that did not have the Roomba. Okay, so now my API key is stored here. I'm not going to show it to you. Once I hit execute, this is going to go and run a Steve C workflow. So this is going to go and sort of make a cross product of the two lists of store IDs and product SKUs. So for the first store I gave it, it's going to check each SKU at that store and give me the inventory. 
And at the second store, it's going to check each SKU at that store, give me the inventory. In this case, taking two times two equals four requests. So it should be done right about now. Once it's done, I can download the workflow output on the DC data platform. And here's the workflow output. So it has four rows, like I said, one for each pair of product and store. So we can see here the first two SKUs are for the Roomba, and then they differ by the store on each request. So I can see here that store 1448, there's nothing in column E because that is showing me the first element of that stores array. If it's populated, if the store has it, it's going to show me. But in this case, it doesn't. But when I use store 1531, the Union Square store that had it, I get a, a value here in column E. So I could just flag, uh, convert this to a Boolean in Excel or do something in a database uh, where basically if column E is populated, it means yes, the store has it. And you can just see it replays the store ID here. So it's taking the first element in the Best Buy response. And then Steve C automatically flattens it up. So I can see it here. And you can also see this interesting low stock field. So this is neat. So it says that the Roomba, there's plenty of them in stock in Union Square. But if I look at that little floor moppy thing in Union Square, it says, uh-oh, it's low stock. You know, you better act soon. So let's see if this changes how Best Buy presents it to us on the website. So here's the little moppy thing. And let's do check all stores, bring up that availability map again. Okay, so it says at Union Square, hurry, only three left. So it looks like when that little low stock flag is true, it shows you a message. But here at Upper West, it says only one left. These things are going fast. So Best Buy does actually seem to know how many are left. I would hope so, but they don't actually show it to you on their API. They just tell you if it's low or not. So that number of inventory is probably private to them and they don't make it available via their official API. You could go and scrape the HTML on this website. Uh, I looked, I don't really see it delivered in a structured response, but that's one way you could get this if you really need it. This is a JavaScript generated page, so you'd probably need to render that JavaScript as well. So that's it for Best Buy and everything that I showed you in this video, you can apply to Home Depot, which I'll put a link to below. Again, these are unofficial endpoints, so I can't actually advertise you using the CFC data platform on this, but what you do with this information is up to you. And you can also use this for Lowe's. They have exactly similar endpoints for getting inventory where you give it in Lowe's case a product ID and store ID. And in Home Depot, if you run product details, you can optionally give it a list of store IDs and it will give you back the inventory information. Let me know what other stores or APIs you want to see for retail data. Let me know anything I missed in the comments below. I'm just curious your overall feedback. What else would you want to do? Are combining multiple stores and multiple SKUs useful or do you want to do something else? Let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to make future videos covering those topics. And don't forget to subscribe to Steve C Data so you never miss those future videos. Give me a like if you like this and I wish you the best in your holiday shopping adventure and stay data driven.